Hello, this is Jake Gunther, and this is a short video about integrating the exponential function. Anyone who's had a course on calculus or several courses on calculus knows about uh, knows about this exponential function and that it is um, special in that um, it is its own derivative and its own integral. Uh, a slightly more general version of this is, uh, what if we take the derivative of e to the at? Well, using the chain rule, we'll get a e to the at. And uh, likewise, um, we can just do a simple change of variables to integrate e to the at. And a simple change of variables will show that the answer is um, e to the at divided by a plus c for the indefinite interval. Um, and uh, what I want to do is, is talk a little bit more about this integral because it comes up a lot in digital signal processing. And in, in particular, let's look, before we change pages here, let's look at a particular, um, let's look at the definite integral. Um, if I have the integral, say, from u to v of e to the at dt, that would turn into e to the at over a evaluated at t equal u and t equal v. So we'll have e to the av minus e to the au divided by a. Let's look at a particular instance of this uh, integral. And uh, the integral that I'd like to look at is the following. Let's integrate e to the minus j 2 pi f t dt. And let's integrate that from minus t over 2 to capital T over 2. So in this example, a now uh, has taken the value negative j 2 pi f. But we should be able to just write down the um, the answer to this integral because it's going to be e to the a which is minus j 2 pi f uh, times the upper limit that's t over 2 minus e to the a which is j minus j 2 pi f and then we have minus t over 2 divided by a which is minus j 2 pi f. Uh, if we simplify this a little bit, uh, one of the things that's going to happen here is that I'll, I can knock off these two negative signs here. I'm also going to change the signs on all of the terms to get rid of the negative in the denominator. And then when I rewrite this, I'm going to switch these two terms so that I have e to the uh, plus j pi, because the twos cancel, pi f t minus e to the minus j, and again I get the twos canceling, pi f t divided by 2j and pi f, which I'm going to separate in the denominator like so. And the reason I, that I want to do that is because uh, we know that the sine of theta is equal to e to the j theta minus e to the minus j theta divided by 2j. And so uh, if, if you uh, can see what's happening right here, that's equal to the sine of pi f t. So when we're all done, we have sine of pi f t divided by pi f. And if we want to uh, write this one more time, we could multiply and divide by t so that we get sine pi f t divided by pi f t. And uh, <clears throat> you probably have uh, heard about the sink function before. In a lot of calculus texts, uh, you'll see the sink function defined as sine of x over x. And 
uh, we will encounter the sync function here in just a moment. But um, so I guess one of the things I wanted to make uh, to go over in this video is that if you begin with a uh, integral of an exponential function over a symmetric interval, this is from minus t over 2 to t over 2, then we get this nice um, sync function at the end. And let's take a look at what that sync function actually looks like. Here, here is that function plotted in two different ways. Uh, once again, uh, it's the function t times sine of pi f t over pi f t. And uh, one of the things to note is that the at when um, f is equal to 0, the amplitude of this function is t. And the other thing to notice is that the zero crossings occur at integer multiples of t. So it, we get a zero crossing at t, 2t, 3t, 4t, and so on, and also at the negative integer multiples of t as well. Uh, this, this top plot is what I would call a linear amplitude plot. Um, it's often useful to look at the amplitude or the magnitude in decibels. And so what we would do in that case is take 20 times the log base 10 of the absolute value of the function, and then we get this kind of a plot. So the y-axis here is scaled in terms of decibels. Um, the zero crossings um, from above now appear as nulls in this pattern, uh, and they occur at, again, multiples of t. Actually, uh, this needs to be corrected. <laughs> These should be at multiples of 1 over t. So we should have 1 over t, 2 over t, 3 over t, and so on. Same on the bottom. All right, let's take a look at one more um, integral that, that appears very often. And so I wanted to just uh, look at this uh, separately. Um, let's, let's begin again with uh, this integral from u to v, e to the a t, dt. And uh, we know that this is going to be e to the a v minus e to the a u divided by a. And um, I wanted to, to uh, point out another form that we can put this in that's often useful. Let's write this as e to the a times v minus u over 2 minus e to the minus a v minus u over 2 times e to the let's see a v plus u over 2 and this is over a uh, you can check that this is correct by just multiplying this exponential uh, back into these these two terms um, if we multiply by the first term, notice that uh, we have a negative u over 2 and a positive u over 2, so those are going to cancel. And then we have v over 2 plus v over 2, so that just gives us a times v. So we recover the first term. And then on the second term, uh, notice here I have negative v over 2, and then I have a plus v over 2, so those will cancel. And then I have a two negatives, so I have negative a u over 2, I'm sorry, Two negatives make a positive. I have positive a u over 2, and then I have a positive a u over 2, so when you combine those together, you just get back uh, e to the a u. Uh, but this, this form is useful when the um, interval is not a symmetric interval. So for example, let's consider the following. What if I integrate from 0 to t, e to the minus j 2 pi f t dt? Well, um, we can uh, write this down in the first form, which is e to the minus j 2 pi f t. And then we would have minus e to the j 0, or e to the 0, so that would be 1, divided by minus j 2 pi f. And uh, it would be nice if we could rewrite this in the form of a sync function. And the second uh, form that I've written down here allows us to do that. So uh, notice that uh, what we're going to do is we're going to subtract the upper limit from the lower limit and divide by 2. 
So if we go back to look at the limits, we'll have t minus 0 over 2. So if we write this down, we'll have e to the minus j 2 pi f t over 2 minus, and then I'll have that same thing again with a change in sign in the exponent. So I'll have plus j 2 pi f t over 2 divided by 2j negative pi um, f. And then over here, I'll have the average of the two limits. So I'll add the limits together, t plus 0 over 2. So here I'll have e to the a t. Sorry, instead of writing a, let me write uh, minus j 2 pi f t over 2. Well, we can see again, um, I'm going to change the signs. We can see the sync function sitting right here. So let's write this out. So now I'll have sine pi f t divided by pi f e to the minus j pi f t. We can write that one more time. t times sine pi f t divided by pi f t e to the minus j pi f t. So in this case, we started with a non-symmetric interval and used this uh, factorization of the exponents to uh, get back to the point where we could recover the sync function, which is often useful in applications. Now, the other thing that I would like you to be able to do is to be able to make plots of the sync function in MATLAB. So let's talk about uh, MATLAB's built-in sync function. Um, MATLAB has this function which is defined as followed. It's called sync and uh, notice that it's defined to be sine of pi x over pi x. And the important thing to notice is that pi, the, this factor of pi, is included in the definition of the sync function. And um, Let's go back and look at the function that we want to evaluate. So if I put these together on the same page here, so I'd like to make a plot of uh, this function, sine pi ft over pi ft. And notice that when I'm evaluating this in MATLAB, I don't have to include this factor of pi if I'm going to call the sync function because MATLAB has pi already built in. So once again, if I want to plot this sine pi ft over pi f, what I need to do is put it into the same form as MATLAB's function, which um, has an x in both the numerator and denominator. So uh, we can do that just by slipping in a t in the denominator and then multiplying by t in the numerator so that this function that we want to plot then would be t times sinc of ft. Here's a, a bit of MATLAB code that uh, makes plots of this function, both a linear amplitude and a log magnitude plot. Uh, so what I've done, let's just look at a few lines of, of this code. I've defined this variable t, then I've sampled a bunch of values for frequency. Notice I'm starting at negative 5 hertz going up to plus 5 hertz in steps of 1 hundredth of a hertz. So that's going to give me lots and lots of samples of this function. Then I'm going to evaluate the function. I'll take t times sinc of f times t. So that's really just the same function we just derived. And the, all of the rest of this code here is just making plots. Subplot um, I call that twice. This makes uh, an, a grid of plots that's two rows high, one column wide, and then this is the first plot in that two by one array of plots. This is uh, the same thing, two, two rows, one column. This is the second axis in that array of subplots. And then the rest of this code uh, basically just says uh, make a plot. Notice I'm plotting a, a linear amplitude. Uh, down here, I'm plotting 20 log base 10 of the absolute value. 
uh, and so that's going to give us that logarithmic plot. This is what these plots uh, look like or should look like if you run these commands in MATLAB. And in the future, I'll expect you to be able to uh, crank out plots like this with appropriately labeled um, frequency axes and appropriately scaled uh, y axes. And uh, here's a little assignment to go along with this video. Uh, what I would like you to do is uh, perform this integration three different times, and I'd like you to go through all of the steps that we went through, um, rather than just plugging the answer in, uh, plugging the numbers into the final answer. But essentially, what I'd like you to do is um, perform this integral over a symmetric interval from minus five to five. Uh, here, we're integrating over a non-symmetric interval, also of length ten, but now we're going from zero to ten. Uh, in this case, you're going to have the answer will not be a real valued function. It will be a complex valued function. If we go back, um, this is what that function will look like. So it's, it has a real valued um, amplitude here times this complex exponential. Uh, so the real part of this function is the sinc times cosine. And the imaginary part is the sinc times sine of pi of t. So in this little hint, I'm saying plot the real and imaginary parts on the same axis using MATLAB's hold on, hold off commands. So hold on and hold off allow you to make, to, to put multiple plots on the same axis. Type hold on, execute a bunch of plot commands, and then type hold off, and uh, you'll be done. Uh, the third integration involves uh, two disjoint uh, intervals. And uh, what you'll see here when you do this integration is um, you will get uh, four exponentials in the answer, and you can combine them in pairs to create uh, two sync functions. So be looking for that as you work out those integrals.